is your moment. Don't tell me how bad you want it. Prove to yourself how bad you want it. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing get in your way. Every day you wake up, every day you breathe, you should be improving yourself. You should be taking steps to reach your destiny. Don't let nothing stop you. It's your moment. It's your time. How bad do you want it? Do you want it? Go after it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's your man Mike Bowens coming to you once again live and direct from unleashing the creativity within you. I'm coming to you with another powerful message. This message is called emotional pain versus physical pain. Emotional pain versus physical pain. Now this is something I've been uh, thinking about. I had a few conversations with a few good uh, friends of mine and we talked about this. And um, I explained to them how when you, have, when, you, when you have certain setbacks in life, whether it's a loss of a child, loss of a loved one, uh, career failure, uh, losing your home, something traumatic that can happen to you. Uh, oftentimes that is emotional pain. And I said, as I, as I explained to them, that sometimes emotional pain is worse than physical pain. Because take for example, if you break your arm, right? People can see that your arm is broken. You have a cast on it, and they know not to hit you there. You have something guarding and protecting that part of your body. But when you have emotional pain, unless it manifests itself on the outside of you, people won't even know you're in pain. So you could be walking around like, like a walking zombie, hurt, full of turmoil on the inside of you, and nobody would even know that you have so much pain that you're experiencing unless you say something. And like I said previously, unless they can see the manifestations of that. And so that's what causes people to give up on life. Or that's what causes people to do drugs, drink alcohol, uh, commit adultery, fornicate. That emotional pain. It's the stuff that people can't see, you know, you know, marking up their face and stuff like that. The tattoos. Not that they're not good people, but it's pain, that emotional pain on the inside, which drives people to do things. And unless we learn how to get healed by the Holy Spirit through prayer and through worship, and I'm telling you, and it's like you're just crying it out because when you get in the presence of God, he like heals you from all of that because I'm telling you, I'm, I, you know, I'm just getting back to my mind. I'm just getting back to myself because when my wife and I, uh, when my kids, we moved to Atlanta to uh, start a church there. We couldn't even start the church because our businesses that we had started, we left them in New York. And we went to Atlanta and left everything, you know. And when we did that, our living situation changed drastically. I'm talking about from a whole lot of something to a whole lot of nothing. <laughs> and the emotional frustration, like not being able to go to the mall and buy things. And then so bad to the point where you gotta go to the grocery store and you're thinking about stealing. You're like, oh shoot, see some grapes there. You know you don't have enough money for grapes, but you gotta get bread. So you're like, oh, maybe I'm gonna take a few grapes. You just start eating fruits in the store. <laughs> You're eating the fruits in the store. And you're repenting as you walk away. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. But I got to eat. That's bad. But but that's where we were. You know, I like to be honest. That's where we were. You know, evicted two times in six months. That's bad. You know, because we moved to a whole nother state. And didn't have a secure job moving down there. And, you know, we had businesses but down there. But it takes time for a business to really grow. And our cleaning business picked up when we were down there, but no child care. So my wife was working a regular job and doing the cleaning, and I'm trying to help her with the cleaning during the day, but then I have to go pick up the kids. And so it's, it, that, that was a struggle. And so when we left there, we went back to um, my in-law's house, and we lived in the basement. Now, I'm 5'10", 5'11". The basement was like 5 foot 10 inches. So my ceiling, my head could touch the ceiling standing up. 
It was a one bedroom and it's five of us. So my wife and two kids, my wife and three kids were sleeping in one bed and I was sleeping on a couch in a basement. And now mind you, we still had our house where we lived at in New York. We still had our house, but the tenants were in there and we had to get the tenants out. And then when we saw the place, they damaged it so bad that we had to renovate the entire downstairs and upstairs, which was gonna take time and a lot of money. So in the meantime, we had to stay in a basement. And every day, you're just kicking yourself because of the decision that you made and everything that you gave up. And you start to think about what it is that you could have did better and all the things that you had and the mistakes that you made and the things that you lost. And, and it's like a downward spiral because your mind stays there if you let it. But I was fortunate through the grace of God that I kept going to church. And I would go to a place where nobody knew me. I just sit in the back and let the let the Spirit of the Lord minister to me. What I mean by that is they would the worship team would sing and the Spirit would just cleanse me, help me remove all of that hate or anxiety or anger or frustration that I was feeling on the inside about the decisions that I made. You know, because it's not always hating other people. Sometimes you can hate yourself. And by hating yourself, you feel like you don't want to live anymore. But you got a lot to live for. You got a lot to live for. You know, and so just because it's going to take you some time to get out of that hole that you might have dug for yourself, don't mean you can't get out of it. But I had to keep going to church and just sitting there and hearing the word and letting the worship and praise and worship uh, flow through me. And sometimes I can't even open my mouth to sing the words, but I would just sit there. And as I, as I cried because the Spirit of God was healing me on the inside, uh, that will, that's what gave me the strength to keep going on. And I'm telling you, it took me almost two and a half years, not just to get things physically to what you could see back to what I wanted it to be, but emotionally healing, emotionally whole. It took me almost two years to get back to my right frame of mind and within myself at peace and ha happy and whole and full of life and full of motivation and full of, you know, inspiration. It took that, right? And so be, pac be patient with yourself during the process when you experience tremendous uh, emotional pain. Because like I said, you know, it may be six weeks and you break your arm and it heals again. And then you just have to go through rehabbing it to strengthen it again. But emotional pain sometimes can take years. And for some people, it takes a lifetime. Some people don't ever get over emotional pain. But I want to help somebody today that you can get over your emotional pain. You can get over the circumstances that you have been through in the past. Especially if you ask God to help you. He will help you. But you have to be willing to receive the help. And so, like I said, I just sat in the back of the churches and I let the Spirit uh, minister to me. And I could safely and securely say today, I'm 100% whole and I'm back. I'm back, ready to go. And that's why I do what I do, because I like to encourage other people, no matter where you are in the world, that you can make it. You can make a comeback from the tragedy and the circumstance that you faced in the past. Don't dwell on the negative. Dwell on the positive because your future is so bright, you're going to need sunglasses to see it. This is your man, Mike Bowens. Until next episode, be blessed.